is it going to be for your defensive line to really get pressure on him and try and make it easier on that secondary? Well, uh, well, I mean, the secondary is, uh, with the exception of David Garrett, is virtually the same. Uh, that's good news. Uh, the bad news is they got torched a year ago. Uh, so, you know, how hopefully, you know, the experience is, uh, has worked in their favor. Uh, I think so many things have to happen. I mean, Landry Jones is a very, very talented uh, young quarterback. Uh, and with great experience, uh, and yes, you have to get pressure on him. And, uh, you know, we've we've been better in the first couple of ball games than we were uh, perhaps a year ago. At least statistically, it, it indicates that. Uh, but this is a you know this is a level up in regards to uh, how they protect him. And, how quickly he can get the ball off and his ability to move around in the, uh, in the pocket and avoid the rush. Uh, you know, there's, there are a lot of ways to try, and that's all I can say is try to disrupt, you know, a quarterback and, you know, just heavy pass rush is, is one way if you can get it, and if you can't, then you have to look at some other possibilities. But the coverage, you know, certainly you brought that up, and that certainly fits into it. Uh, you know, if receivers come open in a heartbeat, then the pass rush is probably uh, not a factor because they have a chance to get the ball off so, so rapidly. So it's, it's all got to work hand in hand, and that's therein lies, you know, the dilemma. First came to your staff, was it pretty easy, or how quick did you realize that he could be something pretty good or something pretty special? Well, I think, you know, I knew that before Bob, Bob came. Uh, you know, we had him as a player at the uh, University of Iowa, and I loved his competitive nature uh, and knew his father well, and his father was heavily invested as a high school football coach, one of the most successful in Ohio. Uh, it was just, it was a family venture, you know, and all the brothers are, uh, you know, heavily involved in football across the country. The, uh, uh, but anyway, it was, I mean, it was uh, easy. I mean, I knew that he would be a great addition to our staff, and he certainly was. Have you ever watched tape of what he's doing and say, I know where I got that? Or anything well, like I, that? I don't think we look at it that way. I think, you know, uh, Bobby probably took from here would be my guess. Like anybody, you take good things and you take bad things. I mean, you learn from all of it. Uh, you know, sometimes you learn what to do and sometimes you learn what not to do. And I think that's, uh, you know, I, I've been blessed to be around good, great people and, uh, and I've, I've learned some things that I, you know, would copy and I've learned some things that maybe I shouldn't do that as well. But every, every environment is different and, and the University of Oklahoma is a different environment than Kansas State University. And Bobby, what I think Bobby has done so well is been a, being able to uh, you know, to, to adjust to that environment and, uh, and do the things that allow the University of Oklahoma to be successful. And that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, everything that we do would apply there, vice versa. A question about two players um, that did not play on offense last game, Angelo Keys and uh, Andre McDonald. What are the chances that uh, Wildcat fans might see them on Saturday? Uh, I, that I couldn't honestly answer. You know, right now, because I, I don't know, they'll be available. Uh, but, you know, whether they're on the field or not remains to be seen. Was, uh, was Angelo, um, was there a reason why he sat out? Uh, not a significant reason, no. How about uh, Hakeem Akinola? What was his status? Uh, he's a student here at Kansas State University and still has not gotten the clarification from his community college about a particular class. So, so he hasn't been able to practice uh, with us at all or be involved in 